becomes a challenge when churches, when religious institutions are treated as companies. It becomes a problem when non-governmental organizations are treated as if they were companies. They have roles that they play, and they are not in the same kind of league, as you might say, with companies. It's not for profit. And so if we now have a situation in which government has so much control over who runs the, 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 the churches or the NGOs, there is always a possibility that it can, factors that are extraneous to religion, factors that are extraneous to the welfare of, uh, of uh, the welfare things that the NGOs are, can, all, can always be, enter into it. If government, or for instance, authorities do not like an NGO or the face of an NGO uh, uh, head, for instance, they could use this and, and, and throw him out. Or if he says something that is, that is not uh, palatable to them, they could just use this and throw the person out. Not to talk of churches. Churches have the responsibility of being the moral uh, compass for the for for the, church, for the for the for the for the for people and for the nation, and so if we have a situation in which government is in a position to to remove the board of trustees, I mean, in principle by that law, the government can decide that it doesn't want the trustees of a church and therefore remove it, and in principle it is possible for it to impose a person who doesn't even practice that religion. And that is why it should, be, it should be ensured that that law is amended. That law is going beyond its powers, as far, beyond what government should be doing as far as churches and NGOs are concerned. It can be deliberately misused and abused. And therefore, it should be amended and churches should not be treated as companies. <laughs>